Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today I am very excited to bring you this look at the new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Voyager Class Cyclonus. Cyclonus is number nine in the Kingdom line, and I happened to stumble upon this guy in a Walmart today. Sadly, no Optimus Primal. But I do at least still have my pre-order for that guy, so hopefully he'll turn up soon. Naturally, I was absolutely thrilled to see this guy in the wild before my, you know, pre-orders came in. So I grabbed him, and I just came home and wanted to do a review for you. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Cyclonus's packaging. Then we'll open it up, we'll see his instructions, we'll see his little fate card, which I really hope is not a Dinobot or Black Arachnia card. He's gotten too many of those. And then we'll see Cyclonus himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. I'll be doing some comparisons with other Cyclonus figures today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Cyclonus comes in what is starting now, the standard Voyager packaging for Kingdom. Basically the same as deluxe packaging, just bigger. You got your little partial window up here with Cyclonus and his chest showing. Uh, he looks like a pretty big boy, but it could just be him getting propped up by cardboard here too. So we'll find out just how big he is once we open this. I gotta say, just by what little I can see though, he looks amazing. <laughs> I am really stoked for this. He looks even better in hand than I thought he would. So across the two little front sides here, you get this double shot of the character in his vehicle mode flying around and then his robot mode looking like he just landed and he's wielding his signature rifle there sadly no target master but i wasn't really expecting that though maybe they'll drop one as like a i don't know part of a multi-pack or something the terrain that he's in seems to be some sort of uh pretty lush jungle-like area so it does seem very at home in the setting of beast wars because even though most of the time the backgrounds were just like Rocky Canyon type places, there were some jungles too. On the back here we get the two renders of Cyclonus in his robot and vehicle modes. It takes 34 steps to transform, so he's pretty decently complicated. I like it. You can see his little city badge thing here, which really stands out in that vibrant green. And you can see a Decepticon like cave drawing right here on the top of the back of the box. Your really cool Kingdom side panel. And I want to point out, because I just recently did a review for that new Buzzworthy Bumblebee and Spike. And we we're speculating, you know, whether or not that Bumblebee was supposed to be part of Kingdom because of its packaging. I'm pretty positive this drawing of B right here is the exact same one used on that packaging, so. I would say that more or less confirms that is meant to be a Kingdom Core Class Bumblebee. So just something good to know. Then, if we look at the top of the box, you get a really big... I guess it's supposed to be a cave drawing, but it looks more like it was spray painted on a uh, Decepticon symbol. And it's interesting, it stands out because so far he's the first and, well, only Decepticon in the entire first wave of Kingdom. All the other bad guys are Predacons, and then you got a few Maximals and an couple Autobots too. So he does stand out. Well guys, uh, <laughs> I seem to have no manner of luck at all lately because this is the card that I got. It's Black Arachne again and I'm not even going to bother peeling it all the way back because I already peeked and it is the same one as the last two. So yeah, out of five Kingdom figures now, I've received all of two different cards. So I'm going to leave the sticker on here. Maybe I can trade with someone that still needs this one. I don't know. <laughs> if anybody wants to set something up, you know, uh, just uh, say something in the comments. Because, boy, three Black Arachnids and two Dinobots now. This is getting silly. Moving on from that disappointment to the instructions. Here you can see it's done up in your standard style for War for Cybertron stuff. With the new bright green of Kingdom, which looks really nice. Very Beast Wars-like. I love it. You get this nice render of Cyclonus on the front. We open this up. Shows you how to make him hold his weapon. They've been doing that a lot lately. Like, we can't figure out how to plug a weapon into a fist. Like, yeah, the, the storage options are useful, but this whole, like, here, have him hold a gun thing is like, um, okay, thanks. Uh, then we get his transformation from robot to sci-fi-like space vehicle. You can store his weapon on top. Very nice cartoon accurate weapon too, look at that. 
And then this shows you how to flip out his landing gear, which is awesome, because uh, they've been releasing a lot of aerial Transformers lately that don't actually have proper landing gear, like all of the Seekers, so nice change of pace. I'm glad they included that this time. Okay, now here we get Cyclonus's vehicle mode. Close that up a bit. And this thing looks really nice. Very, very sleek looking. Uh, the only place that there's really any like gaps in it are just right here, the upper arm show a bit. And other than that, it's very solid. Uh, these kind of stick out a little. And as far as I can tell, they're kind of supposed to, though it makes for almost like an unintentional air intake looking thing. Here we get our landing gear, as you can see. Underside is pretty clean overall. No obvious robot stuff. I mean, I guess you can kind of make out his abs a bit. And yeah, it's just really nice. You can see you got the gun on top here, which you can always remove if you want a cleaner vehicle mode. And look, look at the coloring on that. It's really nice. It's uh, almost like a, like a powdered silver paint on here. Really, really good look for this. And it's not just like reused from some of his own colors. It's its own shade of silver, as opposed to this more like brownish metallic color here on the rest of his body. So it's really cool. He's got this nice metallic paint on the kneecaps. I mean, this is pretty premium looking stuff right here. I really like it. He also gets some five mil ports under his wings, which is great for storing weapons and stuff. See, so he's got a hard point on his chest. And also right here and like kind of on his hip. Very, very nice. Absolutely digging the vehicle mode. Here we get a nice vehicle mode group shot with the two most recent official Cyclonus molds that have been put out. On the left, you have the 08 Universe mold, and this is specifically the 2010 multi-pack version that came with a hot rod. And it's done up in just much more G1 accurate colors than the original version. Then you get the Combiner Wars Cyclonus, who definitely takes a lot of liberties with the design, but that's also due to the limitation that comes with him being a retool of Silverbolt. So he doesn't match up to the base design perfectly, but I will say he's a much more impressive retool than the eventual Scattershot toy, which is kind of sad, right? <laughs> like, we finally get a Scattershot to become part of the Computron Combiner in Combiner Wars, and he's less of an impressive retool than the Cyclonus, who was kind of like a throwaway, like something to fill the wave out. So, oh well. And then of course on the right, we get our new guy from Kingdom. Now for a lot of people, this Deluxe Cyclonus was their go-to Cyclonus for a long time. Very popular mold, has a very nice cartoon accurate robot mode. The vehicle mode um, suffers from being pretty gappy in the back there. I mean, look at that. So the vehicle mode's not very strong on this, but he does come with his own target master, Nightstick, which is really neat. And uh, yeah, this mold lasted a long time. It's been redone several times in different colors. This has kind of been the go-to. The Combiner Wars one, not so much. Again, he's just too different from the base design to be anybody's like perfect little stand-in. Though, Cyclonus' new comic book appearance from IDW is based off of this toy, so it did finally get some love, despite not appearing in any other media, so that's good. Plus, his combiner torso mode is just awesome. It's Galvatronus. However, when judging the vehicle modes, I think there's a very clear winner now in, like, the quintessential G1 Cyclonus. All right, it's transformation time now. So go ahead, remove his weapon if you haven't already. We're gonna fold in all his landing gear. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is separate his arms from the rear of the vehicle. So we're gonna kind of wriggle them loose. You can see they tab in right here. Same thing on this side. Just kind of wriggle it free. Forearms may try to open up a bit as you do that. And we're gonna lift these up. It's on a double hinge, so lift this base hinge up because you need the clearance. Kind of get these up out of the way. You're gonna untab the legs from this piece. And then fold, or not fold, but rotate this around 180. You can untab his legs from each other. Then you're just gonna kind of pull them down. So you kind of want to bend and then extend. 
and the knees are a little tricky because there's not like a stopping point that'll get them in the right position but you want them about here where these circles are like just coming up over the top of the shin piece here so we'll take some careful manipulation especially when it comes to standing them up just gotta make sure these are even all right so we've done that i'm gonna grab these little booster sections here and pull them up like this flip his feet out fold these in folds in again very reminiscent of um siege sound waves like transformation i wonder if they're inspired by that all right so you get the feet they are able to pivot so that's good okay so now i want to pull the chest down Pull this back piece down as well. So you open all this up. We're gonna start kind of tucking things away. So I'm gonna pull this down away from the tip of the nose cone. Fold this piece in. Close that back up. Then you want to get a fingernail or something like right in here. This little seam. Pop this panel open like so. That's going to allow this to fold up inside and you can close it all back up on top of it. And you gotta get a position just right to get it to close all the way. There we go. So you've done that. Just flip everything around to get Cyclonus's head to come out. Close the chest. Close the back. And you swing the shoulder panels shut. Get the tab in. Bring the arms down. Gonna untab the wings from his forearms and very much like the universe cyclonus got this double hinge here so you can kind of fold everything back like so and then the edges of the wings actually fold back too so you get a more streamlined look much more cartoon accurate same thing here okay and lastly we're gonna grab these little like booster looking things, pull them out to open up his forearms. You're gonna swing his fists out. And they only swing one way, because there's some plastic in the way here. So swing them whichever way you need to. Close them back up. Same thing here. Very nice, no big gaps in the forearms or anything. Very well engineered. Okay. So we need to go ahead, bring this guy out here. All nice and posed up now. There we go. Here is Cyclonus. Let's go ahead and attach this weapon. Get in there. And you can see the weapon and his forearms are molded to kind of really mesh together. Look at that. Perfect. All right. So this is our newest Cyclonus figure. And... I'm just going to be honest, this thing to me is perfection. I mean, the vehicle mode and the robot mode are just gorgeous looking. Neither one is compromised by the other. I mean, look at this. He's so clean everywhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is the Cyclonus we've been waiting for. He leans much more heavily into the show accurate colors than the toy accurate ones, but to me, I think either one is fine. As long as whichever one you do, you do it right. And I think he does this very, very well. He's got that light purple color that the animation is known for. But he's got some darker accents. He's got those really nice metallic kneecaps. Again, this like, I don't know, brownish, purplish color right here for half his body is very, very well done. Silver on the gun is great. His face sculpt is just awesome. Like Very nice to fine lines. Red eyes. His head is really nice, and he has light piping too. He's got that little bit of orange right there. I mean, man, <laughs> this this is it, guys. They could never make another Cyclonus, and I think I could be happy with that. As far as articulation, he has everything you'd expect from a War for Cybertron toy. So the head is on, well, yeah, it's a ball joint, and then the neck even rotates a little bit, or not rotates, but like swings back and forth. So you get a little bit more out of them, like hilt, 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 hilt. So you get that. You got universal shoulders, 
She's using that like kind of interesting little two-piece design where you get filler under the arms there, which is neat. You get bicep swivel, single elbow bend. You have wrist swivel too. If I can get it, there you go. His wrist swivel. His waist does a full 360, It's great. Universal hips, thigh swivel. He has, his knees are a bit interesting because I mean, they're technically double bend, they're on two hinges, but if you bend them certain ways, it's gonna look really unnatural. You kind of have to manipulate both at the same time to keep him from doing like something weird like this. Uh, so his knees are definitely different. They're double hinged, but not in like a beneficial way. And then the feet, they don't, well, they get some like forward rocking, which I guess is good for doing like a pose like this. Can't tip back very much. And you get some pretty nice ankle tilt. So overall, I mean, this guy is the total package. He looks absolutely amazing. He's functionally a great toy. And now let's get an idea of how big he is. All right, here's a fun little shot I wanted to do of Cyclonus along with the two characters that may or may not actually become Cyclonus in the movie. So you get the Seeker Skywarp and the Insecticon Bombshell. And there is a lot of debate over which one of these guys actually turns into Cyclonus because of some kind of goofy animation errors during that whole transformation scene. And unfortunately, as far as official word goes, even that's contradictory because there's been official word that Skywarp is the one that becomes Cyclonus, which is probably the more widely accepted theory just because they're both purple aircraft type guys. But it's also been officially confirmed that Bombshell becomes Cyclonus. Uh, so depending on who you heard it from, who you want to believe, and what expanded fiction you're looking at, because there are some sources that play off the idea that it was Skywarp, and there's some like the 3H Botcon comics that assert that Bombshell became Cyclonus and was actually able to use his mind control type powers to control Skywarp, who was one of Cyclonus's armada, who, you know, later broke free of him. And it was a whole thing. It was a really cool year for Botcon. I loved that whole Wrecker storyline. Really neat. Wish I had those toys. So bit of a history lesson and just a fun shot of, you know, Cyclonus himself over here being just as confused as the rest of us. Okay, here's our bot mode group shot with the other two Cyclonuses. And you can see they're all very, very different looking from one another. The deluxe toy comes closest in matching this guy's design, but you can see the limitations of being a deluxe. You know, his proportions are a bit wonky. He's very spindly, especially in the leg section. You know, kind of looks like a strong breeze would blow him over. He does, however, have the ability to actually wrist mount his target master in an allusion to the animation model of the character being able to do that. Sadly, they didn't think to like engineer that in for this guy. It would have been cool, but you know. And then again, you know, the Combiner Wars Cyclonus, he's just doing his own thing. Very, very different take on the character. And a lot of people really don't like the Cyclonus toy. Personally, I actually really like it. I just see him as kind of like a future upgrade of Cyclonus when he gets like a Combiner upgrade. That's kind of how I headcanon all of the non-combiner characters that were turned into combiners during combiner wars and also like i said his torso mode is just awesome <laughs> like it is such a shame that galvatronus hasn't been properly used in either the shows or the comics because he just looks great who knows maybe they'll pull something in the new comics since they are using this design but i, I highly doubt it so, we talked about the size. You can see that this new Cyclonus is a good deal taller, probably about a half inch taller than the old Combiner Wars version. And that's very significant because the almost universal trend since War for Cybertron started is downscaling. You know, it's having each size class become generally smaller than what came before in like Prime Wars Trilogy and earlier. So it's very, very rare when you see a War for Cybertron character be taller than their Prime Wars equivalent. And that just does give you an idea of just how big this new Cyclonus is, because this guy's no short stuff, right? He is a good-sized Voyager in his own right. And this dude comes and, you know, kind of looks down at him. So that makes me really happy. Now, there is a lot of debate over the changes to scale and everything and the value of it. And a lot of people have been arguing that, well, you know, the smaller Voyagers that are coming, like Optimus Primal and Hot Rod, 
well, they're fine because like they're higher quality and they don't have gaps and stuff. Well, like, show me the gaps. <laughs> show me the gaps. This guy is so well engineered and is so full looking and just perfect. And you're going to try to convince me that something that's like this tall is going to be worth the same as this guy. I, just, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Throw an extra like gun in there and then somehow it's worth $10 more. Don't buy it. I think people have a bit of an optimism bias. They think that because Hasbro isn't always looking to pull the wool over our eyes, that they never are. And I think in this case, they're really making these prices stretch. But I won't get too into that now. I'll cover that more when I do the Optimus Primal review. So yeah, uh, you're getting a lot for your 30 bucks. This is a high quality toy. Again, you know, if there was like a, a seal, a stamp I could put on War for Cybertron toys every time one actually achieves that mini masterpiece status, this guy would get it. He'd get like the gold stamp because he is a mini masterpiece. Like you wouldn't even have to do much to make him a masterpiece proper. Like give him like finger articulation and upscale him a little bit. Boom, masterpiece Cyclone is done. No more needs to be done on this guy. Perfect. Also, if you want to have some fun, you can always have him hold this little nightstick target master. It does have a five mil post. Why don't we do that real quick? Show it off. Look at that. This is maybe the one thing you can say is missing from this, giving him his uh, target master. Would have been a nice touch, but the target masters, or as they're now called, battle masters, are quite a bit bigger than this now. So if he does get one, it's probably going to be along the same lines of you know what came in like Siege and Earthrise. Still, it is cool. And honestly, I think this smaller one scales with him better than it does with like the Deluxe. So yeah, I think uh, this guy is the total package for all intents and purposes. So do I think you should pick this guy up? Absolutely. Like don't, I'm not even questioning that. There's no reason not to get this dude if you are a Transformers collector. He is the perfect Cyclonus. You will never need another one. Like, I, I can't think of anything wrong with him. I love this dude. He, along with Primal, are finally starting to show up in stores, primarily Target and some Walmarts. That's where I actually got mine was a Walmart, surprisingly. So if you're out and about looking for him, he shouldn't be too hard to find. Or I think online pre-orders should be dropping pretty soon. I did get a notification from Pulse that they were coming in early. That was you know before I canceled it because I found him in the wild. So if you just hold on your pre-orders, they should be shipping. I would I would say in the next week, probably. So yes, like seriously, get this guy. You will absolutely love everything about him. And if he is an indicator of how like the eventual Galvatron's gonna turn out, man, this is going to be great. Of course, that is my definitely not objective opinion on this guy. So now I wanna know what you all think of this. Am I just being blinded? Am I just dazzled right now and I'm not seeing this thing for its flaws. Are you seeing something I'm not where maybe he's not the perfect package? I definitely want to hear some criticisms just to bring me back down a little bit because right now I'm convinced that it doesn't get better than this Cyclonus. As always, any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let you two know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this admittedly overexcited review of the new Transformers Kingdom Voyager class Cyclonus. And with all that said, I will see you next time.